As we prepare our hearts for prayer this morning, Oswald Chambers once said, we have to pray with our eyes on God, not on the difficulties. As we lift up these concerns of those that are listed there in our program, ask you to add the name of Warren Johnson as well as we remember these. And I ask you to remember our family this week as uh, our youngest son is getting married. And uh, so I will be away most of this week uh, making all those last minute plans. I've been instructed to be at a certain place at a certain time. <laughs> and I shall not depart from that schedule. Or else I will be sleeping on the springs outside. So. <laughs> So, play, pray for our young son, David, and his lovely fiance, Amy Scott. They are a lovely couple. I'll bring pictures back to prove I wasn't out fishing. <laughs> but uh, we will be taking care of business this week. And uh, ask your prayers for us as we go through these coming days. Ask your prayers for this church as we move forward in a new vision, a new direction. Ask your prayers for me as I prepare to uh, go to the community of Bradenton, Florida. They have no idea what's coming, do they? <laughs> Don't tell them. Let's pray. In doing so, let us sing together, Spirit of the Living God. As we pray for each of these this morning, after we lift their names up, please join me in saying, Lord, hear our prayers. Gracious God, as we come before your throne of grace, we remember these persons who are ill, who need your holy touch upon their lives. We lift up to you, Chris Andrews. Lord, hear our prayers. Miggy Bade. Lord, hear our prayers. Sandy Davis. Lord, hear our prayers. Arlie Howard, Lord, hear our prayers. Warren Johnson, Lord, hear our prayers. Amber Lindstrom, Lord, hear our prayers. John Lowry, Lord, hear our prayers. Casey McDowell, Lord, hear our prayers. Herb Metcalf, Lord, hear our prayers. Marie Shepherd, Lord, hear our prayers. Robin Smith, Lord, hear our prayers. Evelyn Thomas, Lord, hear our prayers. George Tucker, Lord, hear our prayers. Ron Washam, Lord, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we know you are the great physician. Oh, how you touched others, touched our lives in many ways, and brought peace to our souls, calmness to our fears, how you have walked and journeyed with us all of our lives. Perhaps we didn't know, God, that you were there. But now that we look back, we see that your hand was everywhere along the journey. We pray for these that are struggling and hurting today with physical illnesses. We pray for their families. We pray, oh God, that you give them a peace that passes all understanding. We pray, O oh God, that you bless them in some way with your divine healing. 
using the doctors and the nurses as they care for them, Lord. Bringing peace to their, their hearts. Oh God, we pray for the needs of people everywhere. We pray for those who are making decisions in their lives. That you give them a sense of peace and calmness about that. We pray, O oh God, for those who are struggling and hurting with difficult decisions ahead of them. Give them peace and courage and faithfulness that they will seek your will and your way. Forgive us, Lord, when we've turned aside from you, when we've sinned, when we've looked the other way at others in need. Forgive us, Lord, and give us strength to move forward Give us your grace to abound in our hearts and our lives. Oh God, we pray that your will be done in our lives and in our hearts. We pray, oh God, for your church, that your spirit will continue to move forward in touching the hearts of people in this community, meeting their needs. Oh God, we thank you that we can serve you in so many ways in this community. We pray, O oh God, that your will be done in our lives as we seek to honor you. And now we pray together in the power of the Spirit the prayer our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and power and glory forever. Amen. We have a couple of scripture readings today. Our first reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered him, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Then our next reading is from that Old Testament book of Chronicles. 1 Chronicles 4.10 Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Let us pray. Lord, reveal your word to us in a powerful way that we might speak the truth, that we might speak with love, that we might speak from our hearts that you will be glorified. In your holy name we pray. Amen. I particularly love that Matthew passage. Question. Who do you say that I am? And they answered. But then Simon Peter, 
Who do you say, Simon, that I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And in that confession, the church was born. In that confession, the church was born in the hearts of the disciples. It's a great day when a church, the people, remember we sang the song, we are the church. When the people of God make the confession that Jesus Christ is Lord, the greatest answer anyone could ever give to our Lord when you're asked is you're the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Peter, impetuous Peter, hit a home run. He knocked the ball out of the park. Jesus must have been elated. It took him three years to get him to this point. I mean, they were a stubborn, hard-headed bunch. They, they didn't always pay attention to Jesus. But they got it at the end of the day. And when, when we get it, great things happen. Do you agree? Great things happen when you get it. When I was called to ministry 100 years ago, <laughs> I ran. I said, no way. I don't want to preach. Lord, I just want to be a good active layman in the church. I want to take up a pew and sing off course and, you know, I'll mow the church lawn. I'll greet people. I'll do whatever you want me to do. But uh, no, I don't think that's my call, Lord. And so I ran for three years. I ran from God's call. Do you know you can't outrun God? I found that out. Almost killed me, but I found it out. I was driving a tractor. Any of you ever driven a tractor before? That's a great thing. If you've never driven a tractor, go out to a farm somewhere and get on the tractor and drive it. I was driving a, a Ford 3000 Ford tractor and mowing the orchard and I went under a limb and it just about raised me up and about knocked me off and I come to my senses. I said, God, you're talking to me. There's got to be another way. And so I decided when I got off that tractor that day that I was going to follow God's plan. And so I bargained with God. I said, okay, God, here's what you got to do. You got to get me back in school. You got to get those professors to accept those, those grades. Hey, good luck with that. You got to find me another job because I can't do this one anymore. You got to do that. You got to find me a place to live. And you know what happened? It started falling in place. I, I had a call. Mr. W.J. McEwen called me up. I'd never met the guy. He says, hey, Edwards. Just like that. He said, Edwards. I said, yes, sir. He said, this is W.J. McEwen. I understand you're looking for a job, and I want you to come work for me. What? I understand you want to go to school part-time and, 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 you know, need a job. I said, well, I do. He said, I own Dell Electronics. And I said, well, sir, I don't know anything about electronics. I know how to turn the radio on, but that's it. He said, we, I don't need you to know anything. I'll teach you what I want you to know. I said, you're for real, aren't you? <laughs> and so I worked there with Florida State, you know, and uh, then went on to seminary, and got married, and all the other stuff over the years. But, but God has a plan for our lives. We got to believe that. It's not by chance that you're here this morning. Something nudged you to come. Maybe somebody nudged you to come. Maybe they promised you breakfast later or maybe lunch. But you're here, and that's good. That's good. God has a plan for our lives. We have to follow that plan. We have to do God's will. God has a great plan for this church over the past hundred and 
at 11 years, this church had been here in this community and, and the church will be here into the future. You gotta believe that. Now, God has a better plan for our lives if we trust him. You know, there are some suggestions I wanna lift up to you about the church. How we need to make our commitment to Christ in a deeper way here at this church. In prioritizing our worship, in prioritizing our, our giving, in prioritizing our commitment to Christ. You see, your commitment is to Christ. Your commitment is to Christ. It's not the personality behind the pulpit. It's to Christ above all. Our loyalty is to Christ. Jesus was talking to Simon. Who, who do you say that I am? You're the Christ. The son of the living God. That's the, the confession we need to make in our lives. See the church belongs to Christ. It's not our church. It's not your church. Not your pew. It's the pew of Jesus. It's the church of Jesus. That's church belongs to Christ. The church is the body of Christ. You're the hands and the feet and the voice of Christ. We need to always remind ourselves of that. You know, Jesus said something else in this text that needs to be mentioned. He, when, when Peter made that confession, Jesus said, Simon, this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. You see, that's the other element that we have to lean on. The Father. The Father in heaven is involved in our lives. Just as he was Simon Peter's. Through the Holy Spirit, Peter got that message. He got it. And so we had the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all working at one. And you know, that's what the church is to be, at one in Christ. One body in Christ. That's who we are. Being united in our mission. And our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. To make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I believe that mission. That has been the ultimate mission of the church since day one. It's never changed. Well, maybe the words have changed to make disciples. It's not easy work. We've got our work cut out for us in every church. Every Christian church in America has its work cut out for itself in, in making disciples of Jesus Christ. What are you willing to do to make disciples of Jesus Christ? What are you willing to do, to influence someone else in the way of Jesus. Jesus, your Lord and your Savior. We, we worship, we make worship a priority of our lives. We come, we get inspired, I pray, to, to do something in the name of Christ out there in the world. If it's changing our attitudes, changing our, our words, our actions, our hearts, God's got work to do in us, doesn't he? Prioritizing our worship. You know, a family spirit is so important in a church. It really is. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We can sit down and talk as brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to 
as brothers and sisters in Christ, walk together in this journey of faith, recognizing the challenges before us, being united in our spirit, kindred spirit of Christ. We sing at the end of the service, blessed be the tie that binds our hearts. I hope we're not just going through the words. I hope the words are resonating in our hearts. Blessed be the tie that binds. We're united in Christ. You know, not only does this church need to pray, the whole United Methodist Church stands in the need of our prayers. Our bishop has to ask every congregation to pray for the upcoming general conference that's going to be taking place in Portland in, in May. I uh, ask you to pray for that. Pray for our annual conference that's coming up in June. How we need to be people of prayer. Praying for God's Spirit. That we can take better care of each other. Each other. Looking after each other and encouraging each other. <clears throat> Having fun with each other. We've had some fun, haven't we, Minnie Pearl? Oh, yes. We've had some fun. We didn't have the Duck Dynasty night that I was hoping to have, but maybe you'll have that one night, and I'll come back in camo. <laughs> Having fun and fellowship in the church is so important. Sharing God's joy and laughter you know, I know God has a sense of humor. I knew that when I found out I was coming to Morton Beach. <laughs> and I know that when I'm going to Bradenton. I don't know what I'm going to do there. But anyway, it's going to be fun. It's one of the things I've always tried to do over the years in the churches I've served is to try to find that spirit of joy and happiness and, and love and grace. And, and to do God's work. And sometimes it's tough. I, I know that I probably made some mistakes along the way. And I appreciate your grace that you've given to me. But I pray that we can move forward in doing the work God's called us to, keeping our eyes on the mission, call to mission, making Jesus Christ real in this community. Highlighting what God can do. Now, the prayer of Jabez was, Lord, enlarge my territory. It's your will. I love that text. Well, God's trying to enlarge your territory here at this church. Now, Pastor Matt White is a personal friend of mine. And Parker Bennett. Parker's preached here before. and. It's going to be a challenge, no, no doubt, for them to serve both churches. I've served church, two churches before. It's, but it's going to take some flexibility and some bending and realizing that we're, we're all on the same team. We're all the body of Christ. And when we're willing to work together, it can be a great thing. It can be a great thing. I'll never forget the, the day we all went out to faith and we fed the packaged up those 10,000 meals. We had three churches together working. That's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing when God's people work together and putting the mission of Christ first and foremost above all of our personal wishes. We all have got personal wishes. But it's not about that. It's about God's business and seeking God's will and God's direction and God's purpose. It's about putting our personal desires and wishes aside. It's not about us. So just lean over to the person next to them and say, it's not about you. Go ahead and tell them right now. Tell them. It's not about you. It's not about you. Now, see, we got that out of the way. We can be the church. Did the choir, did y'all do that? Did I hear you? 
All right, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Sometimes y'all can be like herding cats. You ever heard? I'll have to show that video. Herding cats. God calls us to be his church. The greatest calling on the world is to be the church. There's no greater calling than to be the church, the body of Christ, the church. Don't ever forget that. If I've ever said anything important, that's the most important. That you are the church, the body of Christ. Call to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Oh, how God wants us to deepen our witness. How will you deepen your witness as a follower of Christ? Oh, how we need to deepen our commitment to Christ and His church. Not about us. It's about Him. The challenges are great. But you know what? With Christ leading the way, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's say that together. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, you're going to be tempted to pull back. Some of you might say, oh, I don't want to have anything to do with this or that. Or I want to just do my thing and I don't want to be involved. Well, you know, don't let Satan trick you like that, you know. See, Satan has a tendency to work on our minds. He wants to, to dissuade us from, from doing God's work. He wants to throw obstacles up in front of us. Oh, you can't do that. Well, with Christ, all things are possible. With Christ, all things are possible. Let Christ lead you as you go forward. Let's pray. Lord, you're ever so good to us, much more than we deserve. You've given us your grace and your peace and your love. You've called us together, as different as we are. You've called us to be one body in Christ. Lead us forward, O oh Lord, in doing your work and your will. In Christ's holy name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's all stand now and sing our hymn of dedication.